today's episode we'll be focusing on unit 3 or chapter 3 on human diversity and cultural areas and contact so uh, human beings and, and human being human so what is the difference between that so what is human Anthropology helps human beings to look into themselves by searching for answers to the questions that challenge us. Some of the questions central to humanities and anthropologies are such as what are the commonalities among human worldwide? The commonality means uh, what makes us common, what makes us the same, what differs us, what makes us the same. Uh, what are the variations among human beings, which is the variations means the differences what things do only some cultures do and what things some cultures don't do and also what why does the commonalities and variation exist in the first place in other words why aren't all humans are culturally the same and how does humanity change through time and where has humanity been and what can that show us about where the humanity is going and what humanity's origin was so it answers all of these questions uh, but the biocultural animal so the biocultural animal so human is a biocultural animal means but uh, humanity involves both as a result of a biological factor as well as a cultural factor for the reason uh, anthropology called humans as a biocultural evolution ev evolutionists so although humans uh, survive uh, by using both their biology and cultural informations, informations, all other animals survive merely through their biology and by their relying on the instincts rather than such cultural informations. For example, consider the following cultural behavior and their possible involvement with biological evolutions of our species. Example: the earliest use of stone tools uh, corresponds with increased consumption of animal proteins. Uh, the use of clothing itself and uh, cultural artifacts allows human bodies to survive in environments that they would normally survive in Arctic and other marginalized environments like the desert. As a result, uh, paleoanthropologists, as we have seen in chapter 1 and defined it, paleoanthropologist means uh, paleo means old, so anthropo pa pa anthropologists or paleoanthropologists study old ancestry uh, by uh, studying fossils and artifacts so if you want to uh, know more about paleoanthropologists uh, there is a link in the descriptions on uh, chapter one on paleoanthropologists so as a result paleoanthropologists are concerned with understanding how culture and non-cultural biocultural evolutionary factors shaped human humanity through time. Uh, the meaning of humanity from the anthropological perspective is that humanity is the most common term we use refer human beings. Humanity stands for human species. Humanity stands for human species, a group of life forms within the following characteristics. So humanities are bipedalism, they are walking two legs, they are relatively small teeth, uh, and relatively large brains more primitive on our side. We have large, uh, we have large brains. Brains. Uh, we use modern language to communicate and use it, use complex sets of ideas. So humanity is a general term that doesn't uh, specify whether you're talking about males, females, adults, or children. It simply means our species, which are Homo sapiens at large. Exactly when Homo sapiens evolved into Homo sapiens or sapiens is a complex question based on when humans become anatomically modern and when they become behaviorally modern. So the origin of modern human species or Homo sapiens sapiens. So cosmologies versus evolutionary and paleoanthropological explanations. So there are many explanations on where uh, the human species have come from. Uh, so the theories concerning the evolution of life dates back to the ancient Greeks, but, but it was only during in the 19th century that the first comprehensive theory of evolution were developed. 
so cosmologies and human origins so cosmologies are the conceptual framework that present the universe uh, or the cosmos uh, as an ordinary system they often include the answers of this basic question about human origins and the place of humankind is in the universe usually considered the most s sacred of all cosmological conceptions these beliefs are, are transmitted from generation to generation to ritual education law and art and language the napojov people of the southwestern united states and the traditional of Taoism are an example of this uh, when we come to western traditions of origins uh, the western tradition of origins is the western tradition culture uh, in western cultural tradition the ancient greeks had various mythological explanation of human origins uh, one early view was uh, the primitives fashioned human out of water and earth uh, another had zeus ordering freya the inventor of fire through stones behind his back which turn become men and women the greek philosophers Thales and Miletus uh, in the uh, 636 and 546 BC argued that life originated in the sea and the humans in entirely were fish-like eventually moving onto dry land and evolving into mammals. The most important cosmological tradition affecting western views of creation is recounted by biblical books of Genesis in the beginning beginning of God creating the heaven and earth and describing how creation and to creation took six days during which light heaven earth vegetation sun moon stars birds fish animals and humans originated uh, evolutionary and paleoanthropological perspective of human origins are uh, vastly different from the previous ones unlike uh, cosmological explanations today anthropologists rely on scientific views of ev evolution in order to explain human origins simply put evolution prefer refers to the process of gradual change in a species over time and in fact evolution is uh, used to describe the cumulative effects of three independent facts first one being replication replication is the fact that life forms have offsprings and the second one being variation that the fact that each offspring is slightly different from its parents and its siblings the, the third one being selection that the fact that not all offspring survive not all offspring survive and those that do tend to be the ones best suited for the environment the scientific explanation of human origin and the concept of evolution are attributed to a series of discoveries of early modern period one of the prominent person in relation to the development is Charles Darwin from the 1809 to the 1882. Charles Darwin is the famous uh, British naturalist of the period and it is known for his theory of natural selections. So in the in the evolution of species and the idea of survival of the fit. So as the idea or the fact says over here selection, uh, so selection is the fact that not all uh, offspring survive and those that do tend to be the ones that is best suited to the environment which means that by Charles Darwin of the survival of the fittest one of Charles Darwin's contribution to civilization was to demonstrate that humanity was part of the world of living things not separate from it Darwin's ideas and the many its fertilized sets the foundation for the new study the study of human as living evolving uh, creatures in many ways no different from the rest of the animals lives many kinds of life form have become extinct like the dinosaurs but each of today's living species include humanity have an evolutionary ancestry that researches far back in time the kind of humanity and human physical variation so there are different types of human uh, variations and physical formations uh, first of uh, racial types and anthropological perspective so uh, humans can be uh, indifferentiated uh, by their racial types so uh, racial types in anthropological perspective means obviously not all human beings look the same so humans have spent some 
time putting people of different colors body shapes and so into different categories of sometimes called race biologically speaking a race is a group when biologically speaking an anthropology bi biologically speaking a race is a type of organ organisms of the same species that share similar physical and uh, when you say physical genetic attributes and specific geographic regions when they are in a specific geographical region and have similar physical or genetic similarities they are called race the second one being adaptations adaptation can be understood as a process of behavior or behavioral or biological that increase the likelihood of survival for an organism an adaptation can be a mutation that confers an advantage example a frog can have a frog that has better camouflage uh, skin that its sibling has a lower chance of being snapped by a fish so this is about uh, surviving uh, so adaptation uh, so by adaptation means by skin color which skin color one of the most visible human characteristics is a good example of adaptation is skin color example of adaptation to a particular environment the darkest skin appears in population or originating in tropical zones such as Africa and Asia the lightest skin in traditional found in North Europe because over time natural selection favored dark skins in areas that received extensive and more intensive sunlight uh, the difference in uh, stature between uh, Arctic such as in Utes and East Africa such as Malaysia. The rapid uh, physiological changes that occur in one's lifetime like uh, mountain race adjustments to lower oxygen levels that at high altitude are referred to habitation or acclimatization. So uh, there are difference in uh, people living in uh, higher altitude areas and lower altitude areas this uh, phys physiological changes can be uh, referred to as habitations and acclimatizations so what anthropologists can say for sure about human race is that so uh, do human race exist very strictly speaking yes homo sapiens sapiens does feature geographically based on difference within the uh, species understand uh, or consider two very important points the uh, first one being this genetic difference don't mean a lot biologically second and most important is the cultural behavior isn't genetically linked to those geographical differences uh, one of the main reasons the race concept uh, concept really doesn't apply to humans is that defining human races is almost impossible human races the history of racial typing so how do we tell if a, a specific person is from this race or from another so some of the first records of human classifying other as a certain types of, uh, of uh, come from ancient Egypt where in the 1350s BC you can see records of them classifying human by skin colors by the 16th century during the age of the discovery of the European voyaging around the world where encountering many previously unknown peoples and developing racial classification of their own some naturalists of the 16th uh, century through the 19th centuries proposed that savages were even different species than white Europeans saying that they should they shouldn't even be considered as human beings the root problem of all this uh, following around the identification of all types of was biological determinism that the idea that physical traits were somehow linked to behaviors the grand illusion race turns out is arbitrary over the years various various anthropologists have attempted to classify the human species into various races such as the caucasians black africans asians and so on caucasians being the white people which are found in the western and the, in the Europe's the black Africans being uh, Africans Asians being found in the east side of the world now any attempt to classify human race raises a number of questions one through the 1970s study of by Harvard anthropologist RC Luton concluded that uh, human racial classification is in of 
own social value and positively destructive of social and human relations. For most professional anthropologists today, human race is an antiquated concept for biomedical reasons and sometimes forensic identification of bodies. The reality of genetic ancestry can be important, but color code races loaded with behavioral traits are basically arbitrary. Why is everyone different? Human culture, diversity, and variations. Although all humans are the same species, they do not act the same way. Human behaviors variety and tremendous worldwide. If race doesn't color, if race doesn't control person's characteristics, what does account for human behavior variation? In short. The answer is culture. So it is not the skin of the color or the language, but it is the culture. So culture differs because people live in different conditions by ecological, economic, social, uh, or what have you. Uh, for example, each culture is ultimately a unique adaptation to the social and environmental conditions in which it evolves. So that is it for uh, chapter 3 on introduction to anthropology, social anthropology please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you could be notified of uh, our next uh, uh, chapter that we will be covering on anthropology which focuses on uh, marginalizing and minorities and vulnerable groups the link to this uh, video will be in, in the description below uh please make sure to uh, check that out also the links to chapter one two uh chapter one and two will be in the link in the description below and thank you very much